Hello everyone, uh, welcome again back to uh, the continuation of our of our graphic design uh, crash course. This is uh, of course DMOX Design Creatives and um, previously we've been talking about uh, the basics, the basic elements that uh, you must have or the basic principles or uh, basic things that you must know before you start uh, your journey to graphic design and uh, the day before uh, we talked about uh, uh, every every time that we've been meeting we've been talking about uh, two different elements so that you can easily uh, absorb and actually put them in your minds and make them stick in your minds so today we want to talk about something different but before that i want to take you back to where we started uh, and of course we started with the definition uh, to graphic design and uh, we talked about uh, graphic design as a craft where professionals or people create uh, visual content to communicate uh, their messages to the end users and then after that uh, we had a uh, few things that we we had to go through that we had to uh, have in our minds at a, at the back of our minds things that we were to do because uh, we we can't go to practicals we can't go to practicals without uh, getting to know the basics and i told you previously that we are using we will be using a uh, figma because uh, this is the best uh, software the best software that is available for uh, graphic design the software that is free free of charge uh, you won't uh, pay for anything to actually start uh, doing your own designs the software that stores your uh, projects your everything that you do your activities on the cloud you don't have to store them in your computer or in your available machine uh, the software that you can share your work as you continue you can share your work someone else uh, somewhere else can have a look at what you're doing and uh, give uh, their recommendations we also talked about the so today i want to take you to something uh, that is uh, different from what we've been talking about and uh, this is uh, of course uh, uh, consistency after consistency we will talk about uh, hierarchy and after hierarchy we will talk about design thinking and research so today i want us to uh, i want to take you through three things consistency hierarchy and design thinking and research or basically research so when we talk about consistency what comes in your mind when you talk about consistency consistency is marked by harmony regularity or steadiness how regular do you use your color? How regularly do you use your font? Are you this person that when you're designing an application or when you're designing a website, you're using so many fonts, so many font families, so many colors. You need to put yourself in a position that you have either three or four or five primary colors colors that you will use uh, in your design that people when they see that color they see that company for example if you see facebook you see which color we see blue and facebook has over time been using blue if you look at safaricom which color do you look do you see that's an example. Which color do you see? Green. They have a primary color that they consistently, regularly use. So consistency is marked by harmony, regularity, and steadiness. 
To be consistent means you don't deviate from a particular design interface. Don't deviate. Do not use this interface or a specific inter or a particular interface for the landing page. Then the other pages on your website are quite different, something different from your first page. So the customer, when they come into your, they get into your application, they will be like, when they get to the first page, which is the landing page, and then they decide to go to the next page, which, which may be the about us page, they may decide to go to uh, contact or uh, activities, or they may decide to go to um, frequently asked questions. And when they go to these other pages, when they go to these other pages, they find something that is weird, different from the first interface. So, uh, to be consistent means you don't deviate uh, a particular design interface. If you are designing a website, you will not be consistent if you keep on changing the colors, right? And also, if you keep on changing your typefaces, that is what we talked about that was uh, typography if you keep on changing typefaces if you keep on changing your colors you're going to miss it you're going to miss it so the following must be adhered cohesiveness you must be cohesive you must look at the colors that you're using and the font be consistent on the colors that you use you must consider alignment you also must consider inconsistency which is also uh, something that is very interesting now when you talk of cohesiveness what do we mean just like a book is structured from the first page to the last page a designer's work must be cohesive there should be a flow of content in the elements that you are working on the user must glued to elements because they are related to each other make sure that your elements are related to each other do not deviate from uh, the elements number two colors and fonts as a designer you must ensure that you use a constant font colors that are related and is it is advisable to use a consistent group of colors. If you use different colors for the same product, the user may get confused, right? And at some point, they may just leave your application, just go and look for something else that someone else did that might be more appealing to them. So you must have a primary color that uh, will associate you with your products. A good example, as I had told you, is uh, Safaricom. They use green. Their primary color is green, 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 green. In every other advert, every different website or product launched, the color green must appear. And in most cases, it is the dominant color. Therefore, as stated above, uh, consistency has a lot to has a lot of benefits has a lot of uh, advantages and uh, using additional typefaces or colors can be used at for different uh, pages uh, but it should not actually you should not use so many colors so different colors that are not going to make uh, the user experience uh, flow uh, seamlessly so the other thing is about uh, alignment uh, consider the left side uh, of your page uh, or the left vertical uh, margin of your page if you have a, a website consider them up uh, an application screen infographic etc containing a logo consider where you place your logo consider where you place your images Consider how you place your header. Where do you place your header? Consider where you place your footer. Those are very, very, very important things. If you don't align them very well, they will actually appear 
very awkward on your on your screen if you are customer opens or a client or anyone opens your application they will see things that are not uh, very well aligned you need to align your uh, your content you need to align your if it's about footer make every item make every uh, button be aligned in one line or vertically or horizontally look at the size also of the uh, buttons or images and everything that you are going to just put on your on your application or on your page so aligning these elements to each other will make it easier for the eye to move down the page but also makes the layout of this content uh, seem considered and intentional uh, and then there's there's something else that we were to talk about uh, inconsistency sometimes it is good to be inconsistent you, it is not always obvious that when you move within a specific flow of things if you move from point a b c d you may move from a and jump to c jump to d and then jump to z you don't have to have if it's about uh, your font don't every time make use of the same font type you can change your font in a different page so that maybe the page may be in need of a, a, a font that maybe needs more communication to the co customer, to the consumer, or to the user. So sometimes it is good to be inconsistent, but do not be very uh, extremely, do not be extremely uh, inconsistent. Be consistent. Follow uh, your alignment very well. At times it is good to be unique. You do uh, things different from the normal way, which is allowed. So uh, when you talk of consistency, we have to look at uh, the harmony of your content, the regularity of your content, and the steadiness. They have to follow a, a, a certain procedure. They have to follow a certain flow so that the eye of the reader or the eyes of the uh, the user can connect to one point from one point to the next point they can easily move in a specific uh, order so that is a uh, consistency the other thing that we were going to talk uh, is about um, hierarchy what is hierarchy hierarchy is the organization or presentation of elements in a way that suggests uh, important. The way you present uh, your items or your elements or your content, that is what we call hierarchy. So the arrangement and emphasis of visible elements influence the order in which the human eye perceives what it is seeing. This order of dominance is created by the visual contrast between objects and principles of uh, someone called Gestalt. That was, uh, uh, he came up with a uh, Gestalt uh, philosophy. You must know the following factors that must be adhered to in order to enhance hierarchy of elements. One is establishing a, a focal point. Before addressing the hierarchy of visual elements, understanding the importance of your content is very, very key. You cannot start prioritizing the appearance of elements until you understand what is the most important to your customers. Put first what is the most important to your customers so that these other elements that are not very important to your customers can come later as the customer goes through your application, as the customer goes through your, uh, your, your software or your website. So establishing a focal point is very critical. Your customer must have a starting point in order to navigate through or to go through your site. There must be a starting point, there must be a body point of the content, and there must be a finishing point.
you can't start with the finishing point and then you come to the starting point and then you finish up with the body content no you have to start from some so that there is a flow of uh, your, your your elements creating hierarchy through contrast and scanning contrast is how your elements are appearing you can increase contra contrasts you can reduce as contrasts so that uh, it may the, the, your images your content may appear more appealing to your uh, to your reader when we talk of guest out principles these are the principles of grouping they are a uh, psychological understanding of how we as humans uh, interpret visual information and the elements that affect those perceptions the following affects the perception one is proximity proximity that is how are your elements arranged are they very near to each other are they very close to each other that is what we call proximity how is the previous experience of your customer if the previous experience was very poor you need to do something about the current experience so that the consumer or the user can easily understand uh, or have a good experience uh, on your application or your website simplicity we talked about simplicity make your elements and everything the content and everything so simple to your reader let them understand easily without struggle closure how do you end what is your finishing how is your finishing how does your customer navigate through till he gets to the end of the uh, your application or your website how do they move from one point to the last point how is your finishing does it disappoint how does it happen that is what we call closure when you talk of connectedness what do we mean how are your elements connected to each other so these are things that you need to look at you know, you must look at your proximity you must look at uh, previous experience of your consumer or or your, of your readers you must look at the simplicity you must look at closure you must look at connectedness and symmetry now after hierarchy we're going to talk about design thinking and research now before anything at the start of everything the designer after being presented with a problem must assess do thorough analysis look for different solutions to the problem do thorough research in order to come up with the best idea the consumer has to have something that is very simplified for them to actually go through or for them to actually understand you your client may bring you a product that needs a design a product that may be very complex but your work as a designer is to do a few research look at different institutions look at different organizations look at different things that has uh, have been happening how have they been done how have they done their research to come up with a certain product look at products that have thrived in the market where was their starting point the designers look at how people started working on them so that uh, you can make your product very simple and become the best idea for the client and for the end user so an idea that uh, everyone who sees it is uh, attract and, and and is attracted to and not only attraction but the idea must bring sales to the client so it is an idea that is uh, not uh, something that uh, uh, the client will love and everyone will look at it and say yes this is nice but it should be an idea that at the end of the day something comes in exchange out of the attraction sales are increasing out of the good designs some more revenue are generated from the design so you have to do a thorough research you have to look for different uh, uh, ways of solving a problem that you have uh, been presented with you must uh, look at uh, 
the different uh, ways to coming up with the best uh, decision so that uh, your client can have a good time to actually uh, market the product. So thank you so much for listening to me. I know at times listening and being keen is, uh, is, a, is a, becomes an issue, becomes a problem. But if you steadily follow what I am taking you through, I believe when we get to the practical side of it, uh, you will be able to say, oh, I, I learned this, so I need to uh, do some reference and uh, come up with uh, something that is going to be so nice, something that is going to be so presentable to everyone. So uh, thank you so much uh, for today. I believe uh, when we come to the next tutorial, we will still uh, continue with the same spirit. And I know that uh, you're going to be blessed uh, with these tutorials. I told you these are free tutorials and uh, they will help you as a youth. And as I told you, this is a 100% youth empowerment program. 100% youth empowerment program. That's what Demox Design Creative is all about. It's all about uh, giving the youth opportunities. Uh, giving the youths uh, chances to see uh, to see through things that they have never come across and then uh, earn from from them and they can even employ people out of it so get serious about this thing try your best to understand every bit and if you have any issue if you have a comment question or uh, you would wish to talk to me I'm so open. Um, I will be glad to hear from you. I will be so glad to get uh, every insight that uh, will come to me. And I believe uh, this will be again to improve or to make this thing uh, better so that uh, our youths can fully be empowered. So thank you so much until we meet next time. See ya.